We definitely appreciate your valid company. We continue apace with the day's discussion. Time for us to focus on women and leadership, basically looking at what women are doing in their position of influence, what it took for them to climb, climb up that career ladder, and just basically what they're still doing with that, in that regard to continue to make an impact uh, on the lives of women. That is what you're set to look into. And my guest is here. That is Viola Kiyoko who's the family bank head of sales, digital financial services. Viola Karibu Sana to the program. Thank you very much for having me, Doreen. Yeah, and thank you again for making time for us. Thank you, I'm excited. Yeah, so just before we go to your career path, what it took for you to get to this particular position, you know, we're looking at positions that were largely predominantly male, if I should say, but we're seeing women breaking the glass ceiling to get to this position. But just to create context for this discussion, Viola, we talk about digital banking, and that has been like the vocabulary right now when I talk about banking. But essentially, what is this? So digital banking is, is a continuum. So in the past decade or so, digital banking started with the transition from your traditional bank yeah. to you having to view your accounts on mobile and on web. Um, it then progressed to you being able to making a, f a financial transaction or a payment, an electronic payment on your, on your phone. Uh, mobile banking then picked up in the past five or six years. You have seen a lot of uh, focus, especially for the retail customer on mobile banking. And now, we are at the point at which we're talking about building a banking suite on your phone. So you do not have to visit a bank at any time, a traditional brick, brick and mortar bank. You open an account through your phone simply by downloading, filling in your KYC, what we call your know your customer records, your yeah. ID, uh, KRA pin. And once you're done, you start transacting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. That is the transition that has taken place in the past 10 or so years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the past 10 or so years. And momentarily we look at the kind of impact this has because you're then you're saying that then you don't have to really you know, use the traditional form of banking. Mm -hmm. So what kind of impact does this have even on the human resource? But before then, as the head of um, family bank, head of sales, digital financial services, what does your role entail? So my role today is, is quite vast. So first of all, at Family Bank, we are um, really steadfast to getting to a tier one status as a bank. And so leveraging on efficiency through digital banking um, channels is what we are working on. Mm -hmm. So today we are uh, focusing on digital transformation, migrating customers from uh, your typical banking um, services. Yeah to uh, having or consuming those services from the digital channels that we provide. But of course that means not just at the forefront for the customer, it means a lot of change in processes. A lot of platforms need to be put in place uh, for that to happen. So we are currently having about 87% of our transactions uh, being run on digital and we are working towards getting that to 95% by the end of the year. <laughs> yeah. That's, I mean, th that's quite a lot. 87% is such a significant number. But, but then you're saying that quite a lot of platforms are involved in this one. Which platforms are this? So, um, a lot of uh, platforms include, first of all, the interaction from the customer. Yes. So, what is that user interface that you're giving the customer? So, your mobile banking has got to be able to handle the capacity. Mm -hmm. Behind uh, the user interface or the mobile banking uh, channel that you're giving the customer, what core banking system are you putting behind it? What sort of APIs or what sort of uh, capabilities are you layering onto the core banking system such that this customer can be able to do a lot more than um, just you know your typical transacting or viewing your, your account? So yeah. there's a lot more that goes behind it. Mm -hmm. My role also entails um, working on strategic partnerships because what you're seeing with the evolution of digital um, and the new players that are coming into the market there's a lot of collaboration that needs to happen as opposed to looking at fintechs or these new challenger banks as um, as competitors it's time we started looking at them as collaborators try and find points at which we can converge and create more value for 
for customers. I hear you. Yeah. Much as this is a significant percentage, Viola, you're saying 87% and you're looking at the 10 years span in which you've seen um, this form of banking, the digital banking, and then you're saying that in the next few years or so, you're looking at you know the increase of this to about 95%, you say? But what kind of questions are, do Kenyans ask? What concerns do they have even as they get onto this platform, knowing fully well the kind of loopholes that sometimes... Yeah. In yeah. That's a very good question, Doreen. Uh, over the years, and I must state that this is an increasing um, growth for, for both banks and customers. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, a lot of customers would shy away from, you know, even just going to an ATM yeah. to put in their card. To or when you go there, cash. there's a way in which you just, you, you know? know? Yeah, so okay. privacy people would share their pins. Even up till now, they still do. We well, still a lot of education that. has gone uh, through yes. uh, over the time. And, and as well as, you know, sharing your PIN for your mobile banking, uh, there was a lot of fraud cases that were coming through. Yeah. But for both consumers and the platforms, the, the banks that are offering these, there's a lot of learning that has happened. So from those days, uh, let's say the companies that are involved have worked hard to put in uh, fraud mitigation. There's a lot of tools that are there to curb anti-money laundering, yeah. you know, fraud detection. There's a lot of checks that happen. I'm sure now when you get into every transaction you're doing, you have to put in a PIN. Yes. A lot more people are coming in with a one-time PIN that verifies that it is actually you that is transacting. At the point when you're downloading or registering, there's something that we call device binding that locks your mobile number to the ID that you have. Uh, registered with yeah. and a lot more background checks are happening so checking against government services uh, IPRS which is the repository for the population uh, that has got to be verified before you can transact we are even going a step further to check against KRA so that then by the time we're saying that we're allowing you to transact all those checks and um, you know, all those gates have been passed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're ensuring that you're putting all the safety nets that are required. Yes, and and yeah. it's important to mention that yeah. the regulator CBK is very very um, passionate about this because mm -hmm. if your customers don't trust you, then what does that say about your brand? Yes. So there's a lot of checks and balances that have been put in place, and we actually are, you know, working together with the regulator to see how then we can uh, improve more on. The, the the security for the platforms that we're offering yeah yeah i mean well well said viola the safety nets as, as you as you you know rightfully putting putting it so but then the issue of online scammers it has been quite the conversation there and as, as you also say cbk has been on the floor trying to ensure that they mitigate this yeah. even with the increase of the you know licensing of the lenders and and, and their in but then how do you build confidence in kenyans over time we have seen and even covered stories of someone who would say i had about seven hundred thousand in my bank account and just all of a sudden, all that money is missing. There was a time, there was actually a life in that particular story. So then, even with all this that you're doing, perhaps even as you respond to this, you can tell us even what you're doing in your capacity, in your specific role, yeah. to ensure that then you build confidence in Kenyans with this increased uptake of... Yeah. So a lot of capacity building is happening from where we are to make sure that whatever message we're taking to the customer is, you need to protect your digital tools. So whether it is your, you know, your mobile money uh, app, whether it is your banking app, How do you do whether so? it is your ATM, we do a lot of um, engagement. So we can run a roadshow, we can run uh, SMSs to customers. I'm sure you've seen uh, through the Kenya Bankers Association, they've run uh, a campaign called Ka Chonjo. So yeah. be on the lookout, please don't be scammed. But in the event that you feel like you have been involved in such an event, we have ways that you can either block your account, block your card, mm -hmm. call the contact center immediately so that then we can mitigate if you feel like you have been compromised in any way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really want to come to your career growth, but I want to stick around this just for a short while, yeah. especially when it comes to building confidence um, in Kenyans. And yes, you're saying that... The safety nets are there, we agree. You're saying that you're doing a lot of uh, capacity building and sensitization in that regard. But what other questions are Kenyans having? And does this hamper this increase of digital banking? Because, well, it could be 87 and you want to increase, but with all these cases and stories that we've been hearing, does it hamper? Uh, you would be surprised that that has actually uh, muted down over the period. Really? And the reason is, 
uh, if you look at the statistics, uh, financial inclusion was actually a key player. So in 2006, yes. financial inclusion, the rate at which uh, a lot of Kenyans were banked was 26%. But with the coming in of, you know, mobile money players, with the coming in of mobile loans and savings, yeah. you know, the, the security uh, measures that are put in by banks, that has risen to, I think, 84% as at 2021, and I'm sure it's much higher than that. So with the adoption of, of, of digital, which has been the key driver in financial inclusion, a lot of uh, perceptive changes change is, is, is occurring to the customers. So you're getting more aware, you're not afraid, because a lot of questions come in when you're, you're, you're afraid. So I'm afraid of using something, therefore I will say it is not secure. Yes. But the more and more you're exposed to it, the more and more you use it as a way of life, mm -hmm. then those, those insecurities sort of tend to wane off. Mm -hmm. But that does not mean that a lot of work has not been put in to make sure that in the event that you feel that, um, you know, such an event happens and you've been scammed or yeah. conned off, yeah. then measures are there. And the bank has a robust uh, security uh, system, and I'm sure all banks, this is a requirement. Uh, tools and... Uh, and, and people and infrastructure have been put in place to make sure that you even, you know, nab customers who are transacting. I'm sure you've had cases of people who, you know, send each other money and eventually they were, you know, found out to be people who are operating from a, a living room couch yeah. altogether, yeah? So those are systems that have been put in place. And the government works very much hand in hand with the security departments in the, in the, in the banks or the financial services mm -hmm. to make sure that this then is uh, hastened. And these fraudsters are actually exposed early enough and you can see that the kind of media coverage they get. Yeah. So really, yeah. by the time you're attempting to defraud again, yeah. you must be really, really brave. Yeah. yeah, I hear you. But then just talk to me about the messaging and the capacity building. Because truth be told, uh, I have a pin. Even in my online banking, I definitely have a pin. Yeah. And it's quite difficult to access that. But just as you said, there are those who sit in their living room and there's just, I don't even know how they do this. Is it like a class someone goes to? Because the way in which... <laughs> they I don't do know it. either. <laughs> <laughs> but what kind of messaging are you in build, in, uh, uh, putting into Kenyans in, in a way they can be able to protect themselves in, with regards to this? And I'll give a classical example, Viola. Well, sometimes you're just in your house. A strange number calls you. And the way in which they tell you that you have to check your account or this and this is happening... Yeah. You, you fall prey, and sometimes we may be vulnerable as Kenyans. So what messaging are you give Kenyans to just ensure that they can be able to protect themselves? Yeah. When, when this happens, or, 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 an, or a strange number calls you, and they're telling you all these processes, that you need to do all this and all that. Hmm. What is this? I think uh, the very first thing that um, institutions, financial institutions, and this is not just banks, yes. but fintechs as well, and mobile money providers have done is the very first published the official numbers that reach out to you, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. So in the event that somebody calls you and tells you, I'm so-and-so from X bank, yes. the first question you should say is, this is not the official line, mm -hmm. yeah? But how many times uh, do you even know this is the official line? Yeah, that's the thing. So yeah. the, the official line is always published. So you'll find it on social media, you'll find it on SMSs because we text you and tell you, you know, X bank does not reach out to you unless it is through these numbers. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of um, checks and processes that we make sure that customers feel, um, you know, safe. So by the time you're, you're receiving such a call, please call the official contact center number and say that I have been called by so-and-so. And what happens in the back end when we receive such information, yes. we have a portal where we report such cases. And that, I'm sure, goes all the way to, to DCI. So anybody who feels like they are scammed, please report it. Yeah, please do not fall prey to to people calling you, telling you I've sent you money by mistake. Please refund. Take your time. Look at you know your financial accounts, yeah. and do not be quick to 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 fall to prey fall prey to, to, to that. Yeah. yeah, you're saying that you report this. I mean, in in your capacity in your bank, have how many cases have you reported, and how many have actually gone to the conclusiveness? that we have, we've seen these people p perhaps arrested or apprehended yeah, from so where you serve? Well, this, this happens, um, it's an ongoing process. So I wouldn't, uh, of course, divulge the numbers, but it is something that, that happens. And even just as 
I think as late as last week, yes. there are some people who are nabbed in Kitengela trying to do some some scam through. So our it's actually industry. still very, very rife. Well, it's not very rife, but you will always find crop outs okay. of those cases that yeah. you know sprout out. But the moment you have your fraud tools in place and you're able to, you know try and uh, monitor these transactions and see that there's something and un there's an anomaly here then you know an alarm is raised and the process takes its due course okay mm. i hear you now i want you to clarify something for us there's this um, uh, story that we hear oftentimes that when these strange numbers call you and they're asking all this manner of questions because some would even call you're not picking maybe it's a strange number you're not used to picking strange numbers they call again you're not picking they call again you know someone even call you like 30 times someone even shut your battery off because they're literally just calling you on and they're not stopping but then i've heard some people say that when they keep calling you constantly because someone the, the person who's being called will take it as a nuisance so they would shut their phone mm -hmm. and i have heard that when you shut their phone then you give them a quickie to actually do the transactions oh is that true well i wouldn't i wouldn't <laughs> speak to that because i'm not a fraud expert okay but but i know if of course somebody is calling you off the hook the first thing you should do is just block them immediately even without so you don't shut just be phone. blocking i mean just we all block people that we don't want to speak to so okay. block and if you have an avenue to report mm -hmm. please do so mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. but just don't shut your phone <laughs> block <laughs> all right so viola you have really grown up in this career path the banking to get to the point that that you are you began as as personal banking officer mm -hmm. and I want to imagine this is one of the lower cadres. Well, it's a good job because you graduated. <laughs> <laughs> but uh -huh. Just talk to me about your, your career path and your career journey to get to this point that you are. We know, you know, especially when it comes to women, this not as, well, most women don't really get to this kind of positions, challenges here and there, issues here and there, yeah. but you've managed to get to this point. How did this all begin? Um, well, I've been in banking for the past 12 years now, mm -hmm. began uh, as, as the personal banking officer that yeah. you're talking about, and mainly that entailed running sales for, for the bank that I was working for at the time. Mm -hmm. um, a year after that, I moved into the e-channels, that back then digital was called e-channels, mm -hmm. yeah? yeah. Uh, for the same bank as a business analyst, and I did that for about a year and a half then moved into marketing and research, which is what I went to school for. Mm -hmm. So I, I have an undergraduate in a Bachelor of Commerce and Business Administration with a major in marketing. So I moved into marketing and research, did that for four years, um, grew into a growth manager. Mm -hmm. So growth means, you know, what are you doing to drive new? Uh, acquisitions and drive new, you know, driving retention for the customers that you have. Um, yeah, moved into a customer acquisition manager, got promoted into a senior manager, and now here we are. As, as the head, as of, a sales. head of sales. What I'd say about my journey is, um, I think you have got to be consistent um, to anybody who wants, not just women, yeah, anybody who wants to grow in their career, you need to be persistent in the path that you want to grow into. And being persistent means that you have got to be in constant pursuit uh, of new knowledge. Yeah. Uh, especially in digital, you know, in two years things get taken over, yeah. becomes obsolete, obsolete and you have to pick up new knowledge. So always put yourself out there, pick the difficult tasks. Often people shy away from the difficult tasks, so pick the difficult tasks. You will grow, you will challenge yourself. Uh, through that and always have people that you look up to. Mm -hmm. I usually tell people to focus on three types of people in their lives. Yes. Get a coach. A coach talks to you and tells you exactly what the hard truths that you don't want to hear. No sugar coating. Get, get yourself a mentor. A mentor is more empathetic and will speak to you and guide you through the path. And get a sponsor. A sponsor is somebody who has good networks, has the social equity and will speak about you. So they will introduce you to those rooms that um, you know you could not ideally get yourself into mm -hmm. by yourself. Mm -hmm. But be consistent in the path that you're on. There's a lot of opportunity for both uh, you know women and young people to get into digital, not just digital banking. There's a lot of space, and you can see 
uh, that the regime today yeah. is very passionate about driving the digital agenda. So I think there's a lot of opportunity. There's what we will learn in school, you know, through your undergraduate, but there's a lot more opportunity that you can do. Uh, there are a lot of courses online that people have taught themselves, you know, teach yourself basic coding, teach yourself how to, you know, create a software, build an app, teach yourself uh, data analytics, all those are courses that are available. And there's a lot of incubation hubs as well here in Nairobi, and I'm sure you've heard of them, that give you the opportunity to incubate any idea that you have, and then you can. Uh, build and have something of your of your own. So there's a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of lot of opportunities. Yeah. You say. Yeah. But talk talk to me also about the pitfalls that you had to perhaps pass through. I mean, the 12 years you've been in this the banking space. Mm -hmm. What are some of this? Well, I wouldn't really looking back. Yeah. I wouldn't really call them pitfalls, but actually those were the hurdles that I had to go over to get to where I am today. Mm -hmm. Of course, sometimes you'll get past over when a promotion is happening, you know. <laughs> um, of course, sometimes you'll hear some corridor talk like, you know, you're doing so much in your education yet, you know. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot of challenges and that's not to say because that... Because you've done quite a lot in your education. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> and, and that comes with both positives and negatives, yeah. especially in the workplace, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say that you will never find a, an environment that is open yeah. and, and accepting of you but always focus on what your true north is. Identify your path. If I am going into education, scale it to the end. If I am persistent in this career that I have chosen, do all it takes to, um, to thrive in it. Yes. And you know, don't get affected by the detractors because they're there and there are many. And, and I'm sure even in your role today, oh, yes. you face a lot of that, yeah? And it gets quite uh, can draw you back. It can draw you back, and especially if you're a woman, yeah? You know, there's a lot of time sometimes that you need to take time off to go deal with your babies, to go... But if you have a system that supports you, which yeah. is what you need to find out, yes. find a support system that really works for you, uh, both at home and at work. Mm -hmm. Be the person who always constantly delivers, such that even when you need, you know, some time of then people know, yeah, she'll come back and she'll deliver on, mm -hmm. on what is required. So I, I'd say, you know, be, be brave. There's, there's opportunities, but then there's also challenges, but just... Be brave. Yeah, be brave. What is this one instance, Viola, in the hurdles that actually drew you back and you almost quit, but then you continued mm -hmm. keeping on to a point that now you are where you are, oh. that you can remember? Huh. Wow, wow, but wow. There's so many. <laughs> there, well, not really quite, <laughs> quite many, but I, do, don't I, I really don't like to dwell on those things because then that means I'm carrying stuff in my heart. What I've learned is... No, but I really want you to perhaps just give one for the purpose of encouragement mm -hmm. and to create more um, context for this segment because you're looking at women in leadership and just as you rightfully so and you rightfully said, said it so, Viola, is that especially if you're a woman, and looking at the many things that you have to deal with in that regard that mm -hmm. you just said sometimes you have to take time off and go home take care of your kids mm -hmm. you have to take you know those three months leave especially if you've just given birth mm -hmm. there's just quite a lot that you have to deal with and mm -hmm. this may not come off well to some employers mm -hmm. or some would say you just want to always go off yeah. you always just want to be away yeah. or some employers would actually think that some roles are cut out for a specific gender and they would give a specific gender some roles yeah. but then perhaps in your position just what, that's the one you, you to tell us what was this that regardless you just said nonetheless mm -hmm. I'll keep doing it yeah I just want you to pick one well um I think and maybe you have talked about it Doreen that time when you have to take time off yeah. to go you know on maternity leave yes of course the corporate goes on but then also when, you, because you're away. when you come back yeah you have to find your footing things moved yeah. um promotions are given but because you when are away, away then you feel like you have to start proving yourself okay. once again so you, you you will you will get some of those but what i say is look at your skills yeah mm -hmm. so this may not work but look at what you just brought forth into the world yeah. it's a child so it's always there's always a trade-off mm -hmm. sometimes you can't have everything but just focus on what what is really keeping you grounded at the time mm -hmm. if your focus is making a home and raising children then focus on that 
if your focus is now my kids are at a good place and now let me get on with this you go and fight it to the end yeah and so that means that you you need to come off as I am qualified I am the best person for this role there's nobody else but me fortunately for me in all of the organizations that I've been in I have not um, had or come across uh, any instances where people say that this role is a male specific or a gender specific role mm -hmm. I Which haven't had thing. that yeah I haven't had that and I think there's quite an evolution in the organizational culture where you know to me I find that there's an equal playing field yeah look at it our ceo today is is a lady yeah. so what does that mean it's, yeah. it's a beacon of hope that it's actually doable and i think there's an equal opportunity uh for women we just need to find our best way to uh to navigate mm -hmm. in your own way don't become like a man mm -hmm. but use your poise as a lady to find your way to navigate and to make it through to the end so yeah yeah, well said. You really try to be economical with that <laughs> response. <laughs> Nonetheless, have you had instances where you have had to prove yourself? Every day. You prove yourself You daily. have to prove yourself every day. You're as good as the last You're as, you're as good as your last show, yes. <laughs> so every day is a day to, it's a day to prove show yourself. up. And yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just because you're good enough does not mean that that's it. I don't look at it that way. I look at it as it is you know i need to give my employer the confidence that you hired the right person person and they're getting value for and that and you're getting value for it and you can trust that i will yeah. deliver for you yeah. so every day you have to ask yourself what have i done if i am employed what have i done to make sure that i have met the objective for which i was mm -hmm. hired for have i gone over and beyond mm -hmm. so every day you have to be to prove yourself yes i like that you have to every put day you have to prove best. yourself yes. live alone gender cards just yeah. And I keep saying oftentimes in this segment that if you're good enough, Viola, you are just good enough. Yes. Gender issues no. aside. No. <laughs> There's a lot of opportunity now <laughs> yes. for women. I and a lot you. has been done to you know, create that gender equity, mm. gender balance. So mm. there's, there's opportunities. There's opportunities, you mm. say. There's something that you did say which I want you to elucidate just further. Positive and negativities of education. Mm -hmm. And I want to start with the negative, because you would choose to upscale further in your education from your degree level to your master's to your PhD. And whilst it would look like a good thing, which is a good thing anyway, mm -hmm. you're becoming more educated and more knowledgeable, I should say. But to what end could this be a negative facet in one's working environment? Mm -hmm. um, in, in the working environment, I have heard of cases where people have had to uh, and enroll into causes, especially master's causes, just uh, away from the employer's mm -hmm. uh, knowledge. So you have to sort of play hide and seek with the employer when you're taking time off to go, you know, pursue your studies, sit um, examinations. But I think, you know, if you, if you, if you're really, I usually say, what precedents have you set in your workplace? If your precedents, the precedents you have set is, this is the kind of person I am. This is my time for working. And beyond that, earlier on, on the onset, you have to state that this is what I do after work. Yeah. So I have to go uh, for class. Mm -hmm. I have to take two, three days time off to go sit my exams. Then your employer will, will, will you know, support you. And we have seen um, even HRs coming through with days off for study, for yes. study leave. So yeah. there's opportunity yeah. uh, for that. What I usually say is, don't take advantage because some people then will say you know you had an important project to deliver therefore i will not be there because i am studying so again going back to the balance you have to make sure that if you're picking or throwing more balls in the air that you have the capacity to juggle all of them without without them dropping so have you built the confidence in your employer that i can deliver at work and yes. now i am taking this other um, opportunity which is to pursue or uh, enrich my education and therefore I will need one two three so you have to you have to be brave enough to to say that to state that um, although I know sometimes people say I have done my masters I have done my PhD I don't get promoted I don't get, we have a lot of graduates who are also not getting into the workspace yeah. which is some of the negativities that you're talking about uh, but I think what I would advise people to do is education does not necessarily mean that you will get employed. 
getting employed of course is what we were all told to do get a good <laughs> job when you when you go, go to, to school, school and get a good job yeah but especially now with the fourth industrial revolution and the growth in digital i mean there's so much opportunity you can build your own app you can build your own stuff and you can you can actually yeah Kenya is ripe to becoming the next silicon savanna Viola I hear you you can build your own stuff and we'll come back to just navigate through further with all that you're saying but now just to probe what you're saying you're saying that with the advent uh, I mean with the fourth industrial revolution with the advent of digital space and we also talk about the digital economy which is one of the key pillars of this regime one of the five key pillars of this regime mm -hmm. but with this inception and prob probability of having the digital tax at 15 percent does mm. this even encourage young people because it wasn't there yeah. but now it just might be there <laughs> does well this, is, is it an encouragement with what you say uh, well how would i look at it you know tax is tax and we are also taxed if you're employed so in everything that that you do if it is a taxable event then let us all pay tax i'm sure there's a lot of debate on going about that and yes. i wouldn't uh, get want to that. get into that at the moment but you know when tax is due just you know we have to we have to honor I, the tax I, I would have loved to get your input <laughs> on this thing that you're someone largely in the digital scope and maybe not really to get into it because i mean it's still a proposal yeah. even as we speak public hearings are still ongoing they're supposed yeah. to culminate yeah. next week on monday this is part of what is inclusive in the finance bill but just boring that getting that education up to whatever level you're getting does not guarantee you that job that does not guarantee you that promotion and if the economic survey is anything to go by we have seen an increase in the number of unemployment in this country yeah. if my memory serves me correct that should be around is it 13.1 million or so or even more than that yeah. of youths specifically who could be in the job market who are not and so now you're saying that the digital scope could be a good platform for them but just roughly just as a kenyan Viola, just as a kenyan also mm -hmm. to what end will this impact these young people getting to this digital platform if this is going to be taking place the yeah. tax yeah will it draw them back are we trying to solve an, a problem of unemployment by creating employment whereas trying to again you know push them out just from your analogy even just like, what is this what are we solving what problem are we getting ourselves into <laughs> uh, well i think and and like you said it's it's still a, a bill yes and we will get to the merits of it yeah but um at the onset of course you will you will receive a lot of resistance a lot of content creators have have made a lot of money uh, through you know their creativity and that is credits to them mm -hmm. um so in the beginning of course you expect a lot of resistance yeah. a lot of um you know push and pull like what you're yes, saying right now yes <laughs> negative feedback coming through yeah. uh from that but i think if it is well implemented okay. or has a sort of graduation matrix mm -hmm. just the same way uh you know pay as you earn has some some sort of graduation if yes. then it is very well um conceptualized and put together okay. then you can actually see how am i starting off because it probably means that if you earn a thousand bob then 15 percent of that <laughs> you know gets tax so let's wait and see the implementation of it yes but i am sure that it will take um consideration mm -hmm. of the content creators that are there and you have seen that market actually going through there's a lot uh going going on in the content uh creator space there's a lot going on in the gig economy yeah. space and i think just to give you some statistics in yes. 2019 uh a study was done by mercy Corp and the number of people in the gig economy uh, as it is called were about 36,000, and uh, the annual income from them was about I think 186 million USD in 2019. Now, what happened between 2019 and today? COVID. People were laid off. It got difficult for people who previously didn't have jobs to get into the job market. And so what happened is a lot more creativity went into play. Yeah. Can I buy a car and put it on, you know, ride hailing apps? Yeah. Can I use um, my, my, 
you know, my wisdom to create a TikTok channel and educate people on a certain topic. Can I write? Can I do remote jobs for, you know, overseas, um, you know, employers? Yes. So all of that is what we call the gig economy. And today, from 36,000, that has grown to about 100,000 people who actually say that they are gig workers. And the income out of that in 2022 grows up to 356 million USD. So it is growing. There's, there's, like I said, there's opportunity. Of course, you, you don't expect a time where there'll be zero unemployment, yeah. but it is a continuum. There's opportunities, there's avenues that you can venture into, yeah. um, you know, and get into that economy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hear you. Mm -hmm. Well said. But then with this um, upscaling high in education. Now you've been fortunate and blessed enough that you are in this position with your high level of education, but we don't see this coming by often times. So that what is the best way for one to keep a ground, continue staying focused, much as you want to, much as you could be studying, and even having that in mind, but then it doesn't come your way. Yeah. 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 Um, for me, I think it comes from my upbringing. I come from a family that believes in education and nothing but education. Yeah, so you know, and getting towards the you know the very best level of education yeah. is is what even my parents say is the best gift, is the best form of inheritance we could give you. Yeah, yeah? yeah. an opportunity to um, to go to school. Yeah. So education is something that I hold dear, and uh, for me, to see a lot more people getting into education. And not necessarily scaling it to the heights, but look at those kids who today are left on the streets or are left at home and are, do not have that opportunity to go to school. Education starts at that level, you know? It doesn't mean that education means that you then get employed. Education, what education does is it opens up your mind to new perceptions. You yeah. start viewing the world in a different way. Mm -hmm. Your mind opens up, you start looking at new things, you start looking at things in a different different way and therefore the way that you carry yourself in life becomes then that that then is is the difference yeah so driving education and for me i'm very passionate for you know it's sdg uh number four the goal of quality education so trying to get as many people into into education is what i would really really um encourage um you know and i'm working hard as well on the side to make sure that as many people have an opportunity to getting into uh, into schools. You never regret with education and I, I, I don't think I can quantify it more or less but what I know is eventually eventually it has paid it off. adds up but yes. i like what you're saying that education is not just a precept for you to get a job but it does open your mind it opens up your mind yeah. and we'll come to discuss that a bit further we are due for a break viola but even as you mull over that i also want us to come back and talk about how you balance the two family work and work life balance how you actually continue to stay afloat in both of this and what kind of advice you'd even have for younger women who are trying to get into this scope and also look at what cbk has done probably and to what end does this actually end up curbing the digital scammers as far as that you know this scope in space is concerned we look at that in so much more after this breather we are due for that break but we we'll circle back with plenty more so don't go anywhere stay with us Welcome back to the program and we definitely appreciate your valid company still holding court um, with Viola Kiyoko who's the family bank head of digital let me get that family bank head of sales exactly family bank head of sales and digital financial services viola before you took that break there's something that you had said which i wanted you to just um explain or elucidate further this was opening your mind because oftentimes especially as as young people you always think that now because i have a degree because i have a master's and i've even gone to the extent of getting a phd at 30 whatever now you know people are really getting education very young then we keep thinking it warrants a promotion for me. It warrants me to get a job. But you said something very important, that education is not just a precept for you getting that job, but is for you opening your mind, getting that knowledge. Why don't we understand that? 
That's a very difficult question to ask, eh, Doreen, and thanks for that. Eh? So opening your mind means that it has got to show in the way that you do your job. For example, if you're employed and you've talked about having a certain degree or a certain certificate yeah. and that warranting you for a promotion, uh, I, I wouldn't say that it directly should should warrant yes. unless you know the role as actually stipulates that for you to get here then you must need a certain uh, minimum qualification but I wouldn't say that it's a direct ticket for you to actually getting promoted what I believe and how I would look at it in relation to opening up your mind is I have this certificate fine I've gone to school and I've done very well I've presented my certificate but how am I applying what I learned how am I applying what I have gone to school to read into the way that I am running my job today? That has got to show, and the difference has got to, to be seen. Yes. So if I have my papers, then the way that I conduct my business within the office has got to, to depict that. Yeah. So don't just wait for, because I have a certificate, yeah. then therefore it needs to, to show. And people will say, actually, now she thinks different. She looks at things differently. Your way of thinking is... Is, is a bit is a bit more different from yes. the norm yeah. and that is what every employer is looking for so you will get promoted if you show how you're applying what you have yeah gone to school to read yeah, yeah. and Viola that, that was important for me to ask ask because you're living at a time where there's a lot of entitlement I mean our I was avoiding that word <laughs> <laughs> no but it's truth be told we okay let me let me let me not get into that <laughs> let me not get into that but also just Talk to me also how you are balancing this too, because sometimes it, it, it could come off as a daunting task and a difficult task to yeah. do. So then that's why we would see a good number of women either drawing back. It's either they are doing family or they are doing career, or it's career and then they are doing family, or if, or if they are doing family, they can't function well in their jobs. You know, it's either, either or, yeah. but you are doing both. How have you managed to actually do all this? And how are you encouraging women to continue upscaling further and still maintain both? Yeah, I think for me, um, I'm advantaged because I have a very good support system, mm -hmm. not just from the family that I come from, yes. but also the family that I have. So my husband yes. and, and everybody around me really, really supports that. And what that means is we are not just supporting you, hey, yay, go to school, but we're also giving you the opportunity. Do you need help with school fees? Do you need time? which is the most important uh, commodity for, for, for a working mom. Yeah. Do I get the time during the weekend? Do I get time early in the morning? Do I get time um, in the evening? And do I have somebody else who will step in for me when, when I am not there? Mm -hmm. So it, it has got to be very, very deliberate. I must say it's, it's, quite, um, it's quite a task. But if you're in it, to the end, mm -hmm. then you have to make time. There's, there's a certain concept that I like, and I think even Elon Musk uses. It's called time boxing. Time boxing means that between this time and this time, I am doing this, and you do nothing but focus on that. Between this time and this time. So time boxing really helps. If I know that I need to leave the office at 5 and be at a certain place by 6, then don't waste time. Eh? There's a lot of time that is, that is wasted, you know, just walking around, roaming around. Talking, Greeting you know, people everywhere. You know, there's, there's a lot of time in a day that, that we actually waste, yeah? yeah? So if you get home and say, my time with the kids is between this time to this time, okay. then does that allow me some 30 minutes or one hour? Of course, it won't happen every day. Yes. But you have to be, you have to keep consistent. You, you have to put in the discipline. Yes, there's some days, that there's some good days, there's some not so good days, mm -hmm. but find the time for, for it. And if you put it as a goal and say that by the end of this year, yeah. I must do one, two, three, then every day you must have some deliver, deliberate effort towards achieving your goal because what is it it's going to remain as a title on your page mm. and say i wanted to do this by this but for everything and not just education yeah for every other goal that you put um you put you, or you set yourself out for you must put in effort and that small incremental i don't know if you've read the atomic habits i have that book trended i think in 20 yeah. last year 2021 2022 around 2020 yeah it was the book 2020 it, it was, was the book to read it the was the book that everybody was reading exactly. and 48 laws of power look at you <laughs> <laughs> so atomic habits yeah. really breaks down that and it shows you how small efforts yes incrementally then culminate into something and sometimes you don't bigger. see it as such you don't see it but when you look back and say actually i did that i was able and it's to true by it. the way yeah, yeah you know you're speaking and i'm thinking and i'm like it's actually yeah? true. introspection <laughs> yes. yes 
So it is true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So little, little efforts. You may not see it, but read a chapter, read an article by somebody else if it is school. If I am looking for, you know, property to buy, have I done my research today? Have I spoken to so-and-so? That, it still adds up. It's part of the job that you have to do too arrive at your goal. Arriving at your goal doesn't mean that if my goal was to buy a car, then here is the money, then here is the car. No, no. Have I figured out how much I want to save for? Yeah. Have I figured out where I want to buy from? Have I done research on the type of car? Have I done? Those are the small steps that you get to to your journey and that applies across every every facet in life mm -hmm. yeah now before we move to the aspect of digital of, of savings and the digital banking especially for youth now again also taking cognizance of the fact that this regime is so big on savings mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. but then also um that on that support bit because mom is here mm -hmm. your mom is here <laughs> I mean, you gotta give it for parents i'm <laughs> telling you <laughs> so when you when you talk about support i just want to know is this one of the key ingredients to balancing it out I would say for me yes. yes from your experience from my experience support has got you've got to have people cheering you on yeah and at the same time you've got to have people telling you you're deviating yeah so and those people can be family if you're lucky to have family that you know is standing behind you and rooting for you then good for you mm -hmm. but you can also have a lot of support systems around you yeah. with the people that you interact with the people that you choose to call friends yes. yeah the people that you work with and they can guide you and tell you okay now here you're doing too much yeah. and here you're on the right track mm -hmm. so build yourself around that support system and it is important to not just get a support system of people who are always just telling you what you want to hear cheering you don't on. get a mirror yeah you, you will see what you want to see in a mirror but get people who are honest and brutal yeah. with you and yeah. tell you if you want to get here then there's no shortcut you've got to do one two three or here i think you've done a bit yeah yeah, yeah. too much here you're off yeah. someone that tells you the truth and the truth is is yeah lastly on that aspect of viola the question of mentorship with the young people for instance and you really did quite mention it because you talked about um mentorship you talked about coaches you talked about sponsors how significant is this for young people to understand boring from your experience and your career journey mm -hmm. that is not just about um what you've amassed in terms of your papers and even experience as a person or there's there's something extra that you need who is a mentor who is a coach and also a sponsor okay so getting the papers is in the end then you have to put yourself out there yes putting yourself out there means many different things it means that if I want to get promoted for example from being you know a teller into a branch manager yeah it won't happen unless number one have I stated my interest mm. okay yeah. so whom have I told have I told the current branch manager that you know what I'd like to get into what you're what you're doing and so if you approach such a person and I'm sorry I'm biased I'm using the banking uh, as an example yes. yeah um, if you approach such a person I am sure nobody will ever shut you out that person will tell you then these are the things that you need to do to get to where I am but that person if they're really really honest with you they will also tell you because you come to work late or because you do one to three because you're careless with the way you handle money today those are the deterrents yeah. that will make you not yeah. get to where you are yeah. but what is important to note is that people often don't like hearing the truth and especially if the truth comes with a bit of uh, uh, brutality you yes. know honest truth yes. people don't want to hear that so you'll get out of there saying this person does not want me to to grow or this person sent me away because they told me one two three you choose what you want to hear yeah mm -hmm. but if you really really are keen on that growth and you listen to what that person tells you and I'm using that case because you know a branch manager is the senior most person in, yes. in, in a branch if you really listen to them then out of that you can actually get th the three you can that you can get that person to coach you and coaching you means telling you exactly what you need to do to, to get there you can get that person to mentor you and they will tell you every day uh -huh, so what are you doing they will empathize with you yeah how can i incrementally help you uh, with your life and you will also get a sponsor because what happens is if there's openings for for you know for such roles then this is the person who will say actually i have a i have a person around me who i think can be groomed into into such roles so opportunity is there you just have to first identify 
where where it is that you want to get into okay. and identify the right people who are on that path already mm -hmm. but being fully aware that not we are not all at a hundred percent that this is a person who looks like they figured out and I want to emulate them. Mm -hmm. Then approach that person. I don't think I've heard of anybody who has shut out, especially in leadership. Yes. Nobody has come to any leader and has not received some form of advice um, for their lives. And for me, even with the people that um, I look after, I yeah. have a team of about 100 people, I do that deliberately. Whom you mentor? You, and, and mentorship doesn't mean that you have actually set out a calendar and said, now this is mentorship. No, yeah. it is every conversation that you have. Hi, how is your job today? How are your numbers looking like? Then how can I help you? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. So just trying to leave a nugget to try and make somebody better than you've interacted with them before. So leaving them at a better place than before the interaction mm -hmm. started. Yeah? yeah, that is that is mentorship. Yes. It may not add up today. But later on, you look back and say, actually, that person told me something very, yeah. very and important. And I can fully tell us, it's the little things. It Let is me tell things. you, it is the kidogo, kidogo, up until you haba realize. Haba. Hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. then you realize five years later, wait a minute, what they said in 2018 is now making sense in 2023. Yeah. So that yeah. was also important to understand. Yeah. Now, as we get to the tail end of this um, conversation, Viola, now the aspect of... Um, what CBK has done, they just did that in March, I believe it was the 23rd of March, where they licensed 10 other um, digital platforms. Mm -hmm. And this was just part to, to deal with the whole aspect that you've been seeing on, on, on fraud or the scammers and create more confidence in this mm -hmm. you know, sector, the, mm -hmm. the digital area. To what end will, will it come? Because now we're talking about, is it 32 licensed? Is licensing enough? Does it build more confidence on Kenyans when it comes to the digital banking and digital lending? Does it? Yeah. So I think there was a lot of um, conversation before, you know, the regulation came to be. Yeah. And this is, uh, just for context, this is the digital credit providers yes. um, regulation. Yeah. Um, and so far we have seen CBK publish the list of the 32. What this means is there was an outcry before uh, from the masses who said, you know, these people are scamming us. There was a lot of conversation. Mm -hmm. These people are, you know, operating as Shylocks. And we saw people saying, oh, they've reached out to my people on my phone book. They've reached out to my relatives. They've. So there was, there, was, there was a lot of that. But what the regulator um, has done is actually their role. Yeah. So the regulator is supposed to come in and put in frameworks and put in a policy within which they can. Uh, operate yes. and so security as well is one of those things that mm -hmm. that 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 is in there so there are 32 of them today and there's a lot more so they actually said that there was a there was a list of about 400 of them that had applied so there's there's time but for me the greatest win is that that actually shows that regulation brings some form of discipline mm -hmm. yeah so <coughs> Good lenders will be there, yeah. and I'm happy because they are actually uh, using innovation to come into the market. And you're seeing a lot of uh, players coming in, yes. which is part of the digital growth that we were actually yeah, talking about yeah. earlier. Um, so that means that if you're under that framework, then there's always checks and, and balances that are put in place. There's frameworks to make sure that you're operating within the the governing body that you're that mm -hmm. you're under so that's a plus that's, that's a, a plus. win yes but 32 out of 400 good enough no 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 it's coming it's coming it's momentarily coming. Yeah? yeah that's what they said all oh, right yeah i hear you they said it's coming <laughs> a lot more are coming <laughs> a lot so more coming yeah if well you pass said. the regulation i mean then you get license you get license well mm -hmm. said now could this digital banking does it in any way lock out human resource because you did say earlier that now 87% significant number looking at increasing that to 95% so then I'm thinking about the human resource in the banking halls will there be need for them to what end and what does it speak about employment in that regard if everything can be found on your phone mm -hmm. yes um, so the way I look at it from from a financial services aspect is I wouldn't you know, cut and say that because there's digital, therefore we don't need uh, traditional uh, banking. Yeah. I believe there's a place that each of these um, play in and there's a role for each. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would address it through the way that you segment your customers as, as a corporate, for example. There are those customers who are, you know, um, very high sophisticated type of 
of, of, of customers that yes. you're dealing with yes. and even the type of transactions that they are carrying out are quite you know large if I'm coming in to you know do an international money transfer or I'm coming in to do um, you know apply for a mortgage mm -hmm. or you know negotiate for a loan yeah. there's a place for that and that is why relationship uh, management handled at the branches mm -hmm. is important uh, for that and there are some transactions that are yet to be uh, digitized so there's still a place for that mm -hmm. But there's also a big place for those who, uh, the, the segment that you will target with your digital channels. Mm -hmm. So if it is somebody coming in to make a deposit of 10,000, then, you know, from an efficiency perspective, if yes. you look at it, you yes. would rather that person use other rails to introduce the funds into, into the account mm -hmm. rather than put out a human resource to serve that type of customer. So I wouldn't say that it, it compromises um, the type of, you know the the job market as is today yeah. what i'd say is it actually drives efficiency and it's <coughs> clearer for us to see that this type of segment should be served through digital channels yes. to drive e to drive efficiency like i've talked about yeah. and then this particular type of segment is best served for 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 you know by the branches and this type of transactions then are better done at at the branch of course because you have to do your KYC verification you yeah. have to do all of that yeah? yeah and that is done at um, at the branches so there's a place uh, to play but for me what I would encourage people is you know move with the times yeah so don't don't sit and and wait for redundancy I'm not saying that it's going to happen but in the event you're seeing your job is getting um, overtaken by events you have to again I talked about constant pursuit of yeah. skilling yourself yeah. so skill yourself in the next in the next role how do I become a product manager for the digital apps that you're giving yeah. how do I become a product owner how do I uh, drive growth that rather than um, you know the, your typical on-ground sales today yes. which is what happens at the branches how then do I drive growth through digital channels so have you skilled yourself have you retooled yourself to mm -hmm. to fitting the next type of jobs yeah yeah and you see that was important for me to ask because even as you're explaining it that I am thinking about how over time we are looking at some jobs which in some years to come like 10 20 or even 30 the way you're saying unless you're reskilling yourself retooling yourself reinventing yourself then really working in that desk may not be formidable as is yeah. because of this migration so also trying to understand the way you're saying that even as we speak right now, it's not that the digital space is coming to replace the human resource, but they really do work hand in hand, depending on the segment and the person that you're serving. Yeah. I think that was also important to understand. Yeah. Now, okay. even as we st still stick on that aspect of digitization, this is one of the key pillars of this regime. Digital economy is one of the five key pillars. Mm -hmm. And over time, we have seen the ICT cabinet secretary almost every place he goes to he has to at least launch a hotspot and he did talk about the hundred thousand digital kilometer superhighway so as someone in the digital space in that regard when it comes to banking how are you incorporating that with this um pillar this this one of the key pillars of this regime to see how best kenyans can be served can be served yeah uh, thank you so much for that question and i'm really happy that you asked eh? yes. so as you know the regime is quite passionate on digital economy yeah. and driving the digital economy yeah. and immediately they took over there was a project to launch the famous Hustler Fund yes. and as you're aware uh, Family Bank was one of the banks that was selected to participate in this okay. so our bank is really really uh, driven towards achieving um, this uh, you know digital financial inclusion is one of our greatest uh, pillars mm -hmm. and we are participating in it mm -hmm. so just to give you some statistics um, since we started disbursements from the bank alone there are other banks that are participating yeah but just uh, from family bank alone in 90 days we've been able to issue out loans worth two billion yeah mm -hmm. so that means every day about 30,000 customers get access to to these funds and so that really goes to show that we are in full support of, of this government agenda and I'm sure they're rolling out new phases on this and we're still participating uh, in that yes. so working hand in hand with the regime is something that that really you know helps with reaching out to to the masses and and for us focusing on driving that through financial um, financial services is what we are keen on 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 growing at the moment mm -hmm. so what Hasla fund does is 
it doesn't just help you with getting access to the loan, mm -hmm. but 90 out of out of what you borrow, 100 shillings, five shillings of what you of what you borrow goes into a savings pot. So it's not just about lending, but it has an aspect of saving, which is something that the government is also uh, very passionate about. So mm -hmm. driving that uh, savings culture. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing that happening, and and people have embraced it. People borrow in the morning, pay in the evening, and they borrow again. So it's a good thing. It's mm -hmm. a plus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're really working hand in hand to, to ensure that to see how that is actually incorporated, yeah. and see how Kenyans can be able to benefit mm -hmm. with all this. As we conclude, Viola, what is this that you'd want? most importantly young women to know when it comes to uh, climbing up the, uh, the ladder with regards to leadership? Okay. Um, I think for me, um, and this is not just specific um, to women, yes. but to everybody, yeah. tool yourself according to the time that is there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, perhaps that degree that you did 10, 15 years ago is not what is going to save you through. Mm -hmm. Look at what other skills are there. And there's a lot of skills online that you can be able to do. Some are even free. There's a lot of YouTube channels that are educating people on this, yeah? So tool and retool yourself, reskill yourself, so that you are ahead of the curve, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. as it goes. And for women specifically, time box. Find time to do exactly. It can be done. Yeah. It is achievable. Yeah. So just find time, allocate time, find a good support system but balance it out balance it out yeah well said and it's a good place to end this discussion thank you so um, much Viola, thank you so much highly appreciate your time and your valuable inputs thank you so much for discussion. having me Doreen. <laughs> thank you again that has been viola Kiok kiyoko the family bank head of sales digital financial services basically just looking at women in leadership and what it took and what it takes for them to get to these positions, the kind of hurdles they have to, they have had to go through, and what this means for you, especially as a woman out there trying to climb up the same ladder in whatever career, whatever dispensation that you're in. Good place to end this conversation, and ultimately, good morning, Kenya. Right now, we sit ground for Senate. Coming in next. <laughs>